yes 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 welcome to my channel i'm finally finally here i'm so excited to show you all some of the best tips and tricks that i've been working on that has helped me create a successful musical workflow on the ios music productions and these tips and tricks that i'm going to be showing you all have helped me create some fire beats to the point where i show artists they don't even believe that i made them on the ipad without any desktop plugins and I've got about 10 best practices to show you to utilize the power of iOS music production. And if you're thinking, I haven't got an iPad or an iPhone, you know, stick with me because most of the concepts that I cover, light sampling, sound manipulation, enhancing drums, scales, creating melodies, you know, all these can be applicable to your own door of choice. Not gonna lie, I've got some good content lined up for the channel. So stay locked in, subscribe, hit that notification bell so YouTube actually tells you when I upload another gem. And in this video, I will be focusing on Beatmaker 3 because, which in my books, it's one of the best doors in iOS systems. I mean, it's just phenomenal. However, I will be covering Cubase's 3 and GarageBand as well. Can't forget about them bad boys. Right, I've said enough. Let's get straight into the video. Let's go. So I've got an empty session of Beatmaker 3. The first gem for you lot is setting the levels right. So in the mixer part, if you go into the metering mode, it will say that it's on peak. So what the peak means is that anything that you put onto those banks where you load your samples, it's just going to hear it natively. And what you find is a lot of your drums, snares, they will tend to kind of peak, even though it's not necessarily hitting that signal if you take into consideration all of the track. So if you set this to RMS, which means root means square, it takes the average loudness of the actual track. So it's not distorting when it's taken into account the peak. With this, it's helped me a lot of when I bounce out tracks, you know, everything is sounding level because when I did it with peak before and I've turned it down because it says it was peaking when I mixed it down and listened to it back, it drums wasn't even hitting that hard. So I changed it to this and it's helped me to get a really good idea of overall leveling the mix and getting actual true loudness for the whole track. So gem number two, really this has kind of helped me to get started straight away with making a beat. So there's been times where I hear a tune or I might hear a beat and I get some inspiration and I don't know exactly what the BPM is and I can't be bothered to go find out what the BPM is or I might just have a melody in my mind. With this section, click on the tempo bit. It's got the tap button there. You can literally have a melody and you can tap out what you're hearing. When you do that, it will set the foundation of the tempo. So I've got a little melody in my head. Let me tap that in. One three five, just like that. Really good way of getting some inspiration to kind of hearing a melody, hearing a beat, a rhythm in your mind, tapping that on and then getting the right, right tempo to start off your project. Gem number three. So with this, it's using scales. Not quite like Fruity Loops at the moment where you can have the ghost notes, but this would be a little bit close or the best thing what you can do for the moment right now. So I have my own set of MIDI files for the scales that I can just drag in. Let me just pull mine up right now. What we want to do is go into the files section. Go back to the top and then we go down to imports. And I have a file which is called scales. So for this instance, you know, let's start off with a minor, right? Let's go with, let's go with B minor. What we need to do is load up a, a nice plugin or sound. What I like to use is World Synth. So anything from Arabic sounds, Indian sounds, you know, Turkish sounds, you know, the whole lot's on there. Let's load up a plucked instrument. Dun, dun, dun. Let, let's, let's go back to that. Dun, 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 dun. So with this whole platform, it's kind of like a, I would say like a contact type omnisphere of different sounds. There's packs in there. There's um, all sorts of sounds that you can see from here that you can just always download. So let's find a pluck sound. Um, um, I like this one. Let's just go back into the display area. We can click on our MIDI file, B minor, and drag that in. So we've got our file loaded in right now, and it shows you all the skills. What you can do is spread the, the notes on the MIDI across to the first bar, and simply just start the play from bar two. 
so we can see the scales to the left for reference and then we can play within the scales accordingly. So we can double click the select tool down here and it highlights everything within the pattern. Spread that to bar two. Let's set the loop indicator for four bars. So loading up whatever skills that you got and playing within the range to play all the perfect notes within harmony. First thing I like to do is start with a chord. And for me, I like to start off with either a major seven or a minor seven or even nine. So there's a lot of notes in there and it, you can take the range from the top note to the bottom note and kind of play with notes in the middle. Let's start with a, a B minor nine. Let's roll. And let's just stretch them out all to the first bar. I kind of want to pluck sound, so I'm going to play one note after the other. That sounds like. Dun, 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 dun. Remember that melody? We're coming for it. Then I just like to add a, a little variation with uh, that's within the scale, of course. And E, and then back to D. Copy that over again. Let's have a little variation on um, the second part. All within scale, let's see what it sounds like. Like that. Uh, what I like to do to get a bit of variation is just drop it down five semitones. So if you know about the circle of fifths, Really, really useful for creating melodies. One, two, three, four, five. Right, let's see what that sounds like. Yes. Right, this leads us on to the fourth gem, which is recording what you've made in MIDI into the actual sampler itself. So what I used to do is get the MIDI, I used to export it, and then I bring it back in from it being exported. Then I need to drag that into the sampler. Let's load up a new bank. Load up the sampler just right here to the left and click on sampler. So the reason why I use Beatmaker 3, the sampler in this is very, very powerful. I've never seen it on any other door on the iOS kind of like this. So what we do is to the top left, we click on record. So with the input, we want it to be within internal. And then we click on the bank that we're using and it's gonna record straight from that world synth into here. So that's all we need, first four bar. And let's see what we can do with it. So this is another gem. So the things that you've made, what I like to do, and the power of this is to kind of chop it up, manipulate it, and add some effects to each separate bank to give it all a different feel. So let's see what magic we can work with this. So we're going to the slice area here, the auto slice. So you can split it by it detecting some parts for you. You can split it by um, detecting which it automatically detects where a sound starts. What I'm going to use is the grid. At every half bar we'll go with that. Click on save, save to pads. So let's say for each other bar let's reverse it. Let's see what that sounds like. turn into like a Drake kind of sample. I like that. Let's listen to that back. Kind of similar to like the, the fruity slicer. Let's add a little bit of some effects on top of it so we can give it a bit of a unique feel. Put some delay on it so it kind of lengthens the notes out of it so it all blends in seamlessly. Uh, 
Um, just to source it up a bit, and one of my top apps is Slow Machine. So it's kind of like, well, it is like half time. So it's a really, really powerful plugin that helps to source up your beats. It's, it is basically half time. And what we can use here is the filter section. So this plays the little high end parts of the melody. Ooh. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. What I like to add in is a bit of reverb just to give the melody a little bit of space and give the melody a little bit of, um, a little bit of shimmer. A nice secret source app what I use just to give the melodies or whatever an extra bit of source is an app called Crystallizer by Eventide Quality Sounds. You know what? We're going to use um, the one that it comes with. Uh, let's turn down the mix a bit because this is pretty strong. Jeez. So it's just give it, give it a bit of glitter. So. Out of that one melody, we literally just made another one that's completely different. So this is why I love Beatmaker 3 and what you can do with it. Let's just play um, the original. Now, let's play the, the source that we just made. It's just floating right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to add a bass line. So we can see from here, our bass line notes are B2 and F sharp. So let's see if we can make a bass line out of those notes. And this is all from using the same chord and just using notes within the chord. So let's load up a bank. I didn't catch that. Could you try again? Don't like Siri listening to me like that, you know? It's a bit weird. Right, let's add in some bass. Ooh. Right, let's see what that sounds like. I'm gonna need to have some claps in now. We're gonna, it was meant to go with the original, but now we're just going with this one. 